We've got a very special guest on today's program. He's a legend in film and television, David Winters. Hi. And he lives right here in Bangkok. Sweaty cup. Oh, musical director Peter Mans has just released a brand new album with special arrangements of some of the music he's played on this show. Well, tonight our choreographer, David Winters, is going to dance to one of those swinging wild arrangements. So, ladies and gentlemen, David Winters dances Peter Mans. In 1965, across America, Hullabaloo was NBC's top-rating musical variety show. Its lead choreographer and dancer, David Winters, went on to direct or produce over 200 shows, specials and films. In fact, there are few people in the TV and movie industry who can match the accomplishments of this showbiz legend, who now calls Bangkok home. Now, how does someone like David Winters end up in a place like Bangkok? I don't know. <laughs> it's crazy that I'm here, actually. I think if you would have bet me 10 years ago that I would be in Bangkok, I would have given you 100 to 1 odds that it would never happen in my life. But what happened is I was living in London. <clears throat> I have a public company in London, a film and distribution company. And uh, we're actually making seven movies right now. So it's a plug. Yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, I entered a film that I'd made in Spain with Gary Busey. You know, Gary was the, uh, well, he was nominated for the Academy Award for actually for uh, the Buddy Holly story. He played Buddy Holly. And he's been in a million movies under siege. And, you know, you, you've seen Gary in a million movies. Anyhow, so it was, I did a picture in Spain with Gary in Ibiza, actually, which is the disco island, all the discos there. And I entered that film here in the film festival, and I won. So I thought, wow, there's not many places in the world that love me that much. Yeah, so I right. thought, uh, I, I, I won first prize in the film festival, the Bangkok Film Festival. So I thought, well, I'll just try it and see. You know, I'll stay here for a little bit, maybe give it about a year or something, and uh, see how it goes. So I thought to myself, well, I'll give myself a year and just see if I can do my business over here. Mm -hmm. So what I did is my company, everybody in my company got mad at me. And uh, so I resigned from my company as a director. I stayed as a shareholder and I just stayed over here and uh, put some, I, I did a couple of movies here too. I put a, a film, uh, I did actually three of my movies that I did in England. I shot one of them over here, a portion of one, and I also did post-production here. So I saw post-production was very reasonable compared to London. My God, what a difference in price. So then I thought, well, maybe I can do production over here too. So I. And it turns out that a friend of mine was over here, uh, was living here, someone I'd met 25 years ago. And so we got together, he had a project, we got it financed and we went and made it, called The Kingmaker. And uh, we sold that to Sony for America and to Universal for some other territories. Now that was a movie with uh, Gary Stretch, With Gary right? Stretch, yes, mm -hmm. and John Reese davies who was the star of The Lord of the Rings and uh, Indiana Jones. Mm -hmm. A performer from the age of 13, his career has spanned acting, dancing, singing, directing, producing, choreography and writing. When I started out when I was 13 years old uh, in New York City on stage and on television, a lot of television. By the age of 18, David already had an established music career. I'm searching for a new love Can that new love be you? I want a Sunday kind of love A love to last past Saturday night A love that's more than a love just for Soon afterwards, David originated the role of Baby John on Broadway's West Side Story. And in 1961, 
went on to star as Arab in the multi Academy Award winning movie version, which launched him into the world spotlight. So I went to Hollywood, I was about 18, 19 when I did that, and that picture was released, and of course, then I kind of made me very, very popular in America and very, very well known, and because it won 10 Academy Awards, that picture. So, uh, but I started out, yes, as an actor, as a dancer, and as a singer. Cool it, Arab, cool it, cool it! <laughs> I mean, West Side Story, like you said, is a classic. Cause it's a yes. wonderful movie. Yes. Did you stay in touch with a lot of the actors for many yes. years? Yeah, we're still in touch. It's amazing, you know. It's uh, wow. Since we did them, the show, uh, the show was in 1957, so we're talking 52 years later. And uh, George Akiris and I, uh, George came over here and visited me, and Russ Tamblin was here, and Rita Moreno, who won the Academy Award, as did George, for Best Supporting Actors on the Picture. Um, what happened at the Bangkok Film Festival two years ago, they screened it twice, and so they brought over Russ Tamblin and Rita Moreno. George wasn't available at the time. So yeah, we stay in touch. We have reunions. We have parties. We have reunion parties to this day. And what we kind of do is we kind of mix the, the film and the stage show because the, some of the people in the stage show weren't in the film. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's lovely. It's a great thing to have been a part of. I'm oh, very proud of it, yeah. As a dancer and choreographer, he was the force behind the sexually charged movements of Elvis. He also worked with Anne Margaret and often with Nancy Sinatra. Now you're, you're a dancer too, I mean obviously as a choreographer as well, you've worked with some pretty amazing people, just looking at the pictures on your wall. Yeah. I was uh, very fortunate that uh, actually Anne Margaret was one of my pupils and she was doing a picture with a guy named Elvis Presley and she recommended me for the movie but they already had a choreographer so she insisted that the director come and look at my dance class. So he came to dance class and he really loved it and he fired the choreographer they had and hired me. So that was my first job as a choreographer. And then I became Elvis's choreographer because Elvis and I got along so well on that picture. And I wound up doing four movies with Elvis. I call him L. We had a great relationship. He was a good friend of mine. What was he like to work with? He was wonderful. He was so easy and he just listened. He was a very humble human being, extremely humble. He never changed from, I guess, from when he was first discovered, you know? He appreciated everything he had. He, he loved life, and uh, he was a real, real friend. In fact, one year, I mean, many years later on, I got arrested with a girlfriend of mine in Vegas, and he bailed me out. He sent the bail. Should I ask and, what uh, you were doing? No, don't. <laughs> don't. But uh, he bailed me out. Anyhow, the point is that I did four movies with Elvis. I wound up doing five movies with Anne Margaret. I did her stage show, and I did two specials with her. Uh, I work with Barbara Streisand, who's been someone I've known since I'm 18 years old. Another legend as Another well. legend, and Barbara was incredible. Um, uh, Diana Ross, I did all of her shows for three years, both her stage shows and her television shows. So I worked, yeah, I mean, I did uh, a lot. I worked with a lot of people, uh, you know, big stars, Paul Newman and Kirk Douglas and Cher and Sonny and Cher and, you know, many... Bobby Darren, who was a wonderful performer. I was very fortunate to be in an era where we had some great talented people, and uh, I was lucky enough to work with them, yes. 
He was also the producer and creator of the first music videos for the original boy band, The Monkees. You get the funniest looks from everyone we meet. Hey, hey, we're the monkeys, and people say we monkey around. But we're too busy singing to put anybody They down. also were a big music group. What we did is, when I was my first directing job was the Monkees, and we used to do what we called romps. We did two of them every show. So we would take a song, we'd take cameras, like your camera here, and uh, we'd just go crazy on the streets with them and tell them, do this, do that. And we just filmed it, and then we edited it together, which is what they do with a lot of music videos today. So we did basically the first music videos. We didn't call them music videos, we called them romps. But, uh, yeah, and, and, and you know, the, the group was a big singing group. I mean, they sold millions. They were the first group that knocked the Beatles off the chart in America from the number one spot. Now, behind you, I saw a smaller poster for Linda Lovelace. Now, the, <laughs> <laughs> okay. now there's a bit of a story there, isn't there? Well, uh, Linda, as you know, is probably the most famous porn queen in the world. And she and I had a relationship, actually. We lived together for two years in a very highly publicized romance. And uh, Linda was very much like a child. She was amazing because when I first met her, I had never seen her movie. And then I did see it. I was kind of shocked because it's not porn pictures I don't go to see. But, uh, but she was so sweet and charming. She, when I met her, she was like a, a, a girl that just came out of uh, Des Moines, Iowa, out of a, a, a university or something, you know? Sweet, sweet little girl and very naive and so we she and i developed this relationship uh, she actually hired me to do an act for her a stage show for her and i told her she couldn't do it because she couldn't sing she couldn't dance properly so we put her in a hospital and told them that <laughs> she was sick and they sued her and they won anyhow but uh, anyhow i spent uh, two years of my life with her we lived together, and it was very, very interesting, most interesting. Wow. Yeah. And I, I made a movie with her, which is the movie here, called Linda Lovelace for President. It's an R-rated movie. It has nothing to do with sex. It has lots of comics in it, like, for instance, Mickey Dolan's from The Monkees. He's one of the stars of the picture. And the picture ran in London for six months, and we got great reviews. They said it was like Monty Python, because it was this crazy comedy I did. We called it Linda Lovelace for President. <laughs> yeah, it was fun. That might be fun, yeah. Yeah, it was fun. It was fun. <laughs> a visit to David Winter's Bangkok apartment is like a walk down memory lane. On the walls, his countless awards and achievements, along with the posters of movies he's worked on throughout the world, including here in Thailand. So what you've just seen is the beautiful face of Pamela Anderson. And Pamela starred in a movie for me. Good Cop, Bad Cop. It was her first movie, and she's now become a big superstar in America, and all over the world for that matter. In this picture that I made called Racket, uh, I have Bjorn Borg, who was the six-time winner of the uh, uh, Wimbledon tennis tournament, a big, huge superstar, and a guy named Phil Silvers, who was also a big comic. He had the show uh, uh, Bilko, very big TV series. And there are many other stars in there. This is a picture that I made at the Cannes Film Festival, starring Carolyn Monroe. I won lots of awards for this picture, many, many awards. <clears throat> and I shot it actually during the Cannes Film Festival. All my friends said I was crazy, and I probably was, but it turned out to be a great little movie. In this picture, this is an interesting story here. This picture has Josh Brolin as the star. Josh was nominated this year for the Academy Award for Milk, along with Sean Penn, who won. And Josh has become a very big actor now in Hollywood. Last year, in fact, he was the star of the Oscar-winning movie, uh, No Country for Old Men. But before I hired Josh for this picture, there's an interesting little story. I, <clears throat> I liked a guy named Johnny Depp. Johnny Depp was unknown at the time. No one had ever heard about him. But I thought he'd be, he auditioned for me like 400 other guys did. And I picked Johnny, and I thought he'd be great. He's got a great look. So I wanted him to be the star of this picture. My investors wouldn't let me. They said, go out and find another actor because we don't think Johnny, this kid's not going to make it, is what they said to me. So <laughs> I went out for two months, I auditioned a lot of people, and I said, I called them up and I said, okay, now I've got the actor for you. They said, okay, bring him in. I brought in Johnny Depp again. They went crazy. They said, what are you doing? We told you you can't have Johnny Depp. I said, but look, 
Believe in me. L listen to what I'm saying. His face, when he, his face is up on the screen, 60 by 40. The girls are going to go crazy. He's gorgeous. He's a beautiful guy. And he's like today's James Dean. But anyhow, they wouldn't let me have him. So I wound up with Josh, which wasn't too bad. Anyhow, I made two good choices in one movie. They're both big stars now. So here is a, a picture. I made two pictures of David Carradine, who was nominated for the Academy Award uh, and also was the star of Kill Bill 1 and 2 a couple of years ago. We did the contract on a napkin. We signed a little napkin, his name, my name, and how much I was going to give him. And that was the whole contract. Unlike most Hollywood deals today, you have to have huge thick contracts with the lawyers and everything. So we made these two pictures together, very, very successful pictures for me. I did a sequel, so I did Future Force was the first picture. And then the second picture I did as a sequel to that was Future Zone. So obviously I made good money on that. And here we come back full circle to the Kingmaker. But here it's called, and this is the, this is the Thai uh, artwork. And uh, this is Yo-Yo Savady. And this is, uh, um, oh, I can't remember his name now. John Reese davies sorry. And this is Goff, who is very popular in Thailand now. And this is uh, Nat. Uh, he was the star of uh, Fan Chun. We call him, he's, he, the people call him Nat or Charlie. And he's obviously grown up now. He's a lot bigger than that. And so this is the artwork that we had in Thailand for the Kingmaker. And I think it says, Gabob uh, Sri Sudachan. I don't read Thai, but that's what they tell me. <laughs> David says he'll never stop working in the industry he loves. He still acts and recently appeared in the Thailand-produced Hanuman the Monkey Warrior as a convincing bad guy. Yajin, Yajin, Yajin. I changed my mind, okay? You ask your papa to come see me. And we hmm. talk, okay? Hmm. Like friends. Hmm. Like great friends that we are. Hmm. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> oh! Well, let's all have dinner, shall we, boys? Come on, ladies. Let's start to celebrate the evening. Wine, women, dancing, food, everything your heart can desire. David is also producing and choreographing a Thailand ladyboy band and a documentary on the project as it unfolds. Now, obviously, you're not just sitting at home waiting for the next script to come along. You're working on a few other things, uh, one, of, of course, which is a ladyboy band. Now, yes. People would say, wow, ladyboy band. <laughs> can, <laughs> yes, you, can you tell us unique. about that one? Well, um, I looked around in Thailand. I thought, I'd like to do something you know, interesting, but I'd like to keep it in the business. And so what does Thailand have that other places don't have? And so what came to mind is ladyboys. They have incredibly beautiful men who became women, all had operations, and they're gorgeous. And as you know, many people that come here can't believe that they used to be men. When you look at these girls, they're stunning. So I thought, well, if I could put together a band like that, a group where everybody thinks they're girls, kind of like a, a Pussycat Dolls, you know, the American group, Pussycat Dolls. If I put together this kind of a Pussycat Dolls, but they're all lady boys, well, that would blow everybody's mind in America, I know, and in England and in Europe and probably Japan, you know. So I embarked on this, uh, this, this this putting together, this ladyboy band. I call it Papillon because uh, Papillon is French for butterfly. Yes. And the correlation is the butterfly that the, uh, the um, a caterpillar becomes a beautiful butterfly as these men become beautiful women. So we call it Papillon and we're in the studio now recording and hope to have something in the next couple of months. And then we have to stage it, choreograph it, get uh, pictures done, costumes done, and then go to market with it. He has even bigger plans for the future. And I've heard you talk in the past too about uh, having studios developed here as well yes. in Thailand. Yeah. It could be a very good hub for the Fantastic, region. Fantastic, yes. Yeah, we have plans hopefully in the future to develop a studio, movie studio, theme park in Thailand between Bangkok and Pattaya. Well, that's quite exciting. Yes, yeah, it'd be very exciting. Um, whether you're acting or singing or dancing, directing or producing, it seems to me, David, like that you'd love what you do. I love it more than anything in the world, except my mom. I love my mom more. 
but yes, I do. I love it so much. Uh, it's what I live for. It's what I wake up for every day. When I go to sleep at night, it's what I'm thinking about. Um, is this, I'm going to uh, write a book, and it's going to be called Tough Guys Do Dance, because I was a tough guy when I was a kid. Uh, or I'm going to call it My Life is a Film, because that's how I really feel. I feel that everything in my life is a film, and probably my life could be made into three films. You know, it's been quite an interesting trip, a lot of ups and downs, but it's always been exciting and interesting. And so... Uh, and do you observe general life around you as if it's a film? I know that when I'm at a beautiful location, I often look at the scene and I'm thinking, what a great shot, yes, of instead course. of what a great view. Of course, yeah. Do you feel that way? I feel that way, and when I go to the movies, I can't enjoy a movie because I'm, I'm looking at the direction, the costumes, the sets, the writing, the photography, everything, you know. So yes, I look at life that way. Sometimes I just sit and I turn on music and I watch traffic. And if you watch traffic long enough, it goes in sync with whatever music you have on. So it becomes like a ballet. It's beautiful. It's like a ballet of life. And you can do that with anything. You can just turn music on and watch people walking by, watch cars, watch every, just movement of life. And it becomes a ballet. It's lovely. But yes, I see everything as a film. Everything.